Now we will look into some remedies of how we can plug in these time wasters. Number one is spend time planning and organizing. A work well begun is half done. And so if I plan the work that I have to do for students, if they plan their year in terms of the subjects that they have to study, in terms of knowing which are the weak areas, what are the strengths, what to focus on, it would help them. And for, for professionals, it is just not only about work, but it is also about their personal lives. It is about a daily routine and a routine that is for the week, uh, for, the, for the month, but which has flexibility in it. Helps me know where I want to go. It gives me a direction in life. It gives me a purpose. It gives me a day when I get up and I know what I need to do and where am I heading to. It gives me a feeling of goodness within. And so when I spend, it may take half an hour or one hour, just that, not more, not more than that. But if I do that, I tend to, uh, I tend to eliminate wasters of time. I would not have to sit down thinking and brooding, okay, what should I do next? Maybe I can do this, maybe I could do that. No, I just know what I need to do and I go there and pat, I do it. Second is about setting goals. Now that I've planned what I need to do, for students, it is about um, their school work. You know, they go to the school, they go to the college, they attend the classes and post the school and college. They, they want to socialize and they also want to do what they have learned, you know, in terms of maybe some, some research work, in completing the assignments and, and homework, in talking, helping people, going out. But all that should be done in, you know, in pieces of time that they have planned for themselves and which should, which should have periods of flexibility within. And so setting goals are like little milestones, you know, milestones in my life and they help me to reach the, the higher goal that I've set for myself. And so another point that comes over here is about prioritization. So prioritization means what is, what is important for me and what is not so important and what is trivial, you know, not really so important. For example, uh, what could be really important is, uh, is, you know, for students, it could be about their studies so they need to get good marks, good grades, complete their work, that is really important for them. And then what could not be so important is about pursuing their extracurricular activities. It, it varies from people to people. For some people, this could be a priority and not academics. And so it could be vice versa. And for, for professionals, it could be about, you know, people have the priorities for them. Some, for some people it is, you know, family is very important. For some, for some people, career is very important. For some people, the, you know, it's about friends, what well, that is important. For some people, money is very important. So what is it that is important and is on your priority list? I should know that. If I, if I know that, things become easy and simple. Another thing that would help me to eliminate wastage of time is by preparing a to-do list. A to-do list is, uh, is, is just actually about uh, having a paper and a pen and just try writing down all the activities and work that I intend doing, I intend, you know, completing. Uh, one benefit of preparing a to-do list is that as a, as a thought comes, I can write it down. And if I don't write it down, there are chances of forgetting it. Uh, an idea that comes to the mind, you know, I just write it down. Because it's just about catching that idea in that moment that comes. And so preparing a to-do list uh, sort of comes really very handy throughout the day, maybe in a, maybe a small spiral pad one could keep in the pocket. Or, you know, in today's time, people have the mo smartphones, mobile phones, and they have this application of notes and memos. And so they could make a note and that would really help them. Um, being flexible is very important to eliminate wastage of time. Being flexible is about uh, addressing the important issues that come up, addressing the urgent issues that come up. Hmm? For example, 
um, you know, being practical is, is important. So, for example, um, uh, you know, um, uh, we have parents at a home. And so my parents are there, my brothers, brothers and sisters are there at home. And I have... I had given that time in the evening for my own self-study. But now my sister comes to me and she says, you know, Bhaiya, please help me. I need your help. And I'm in jitters and I don't know what to do. And I say, do you think it's right to tell her, okay, now don't come to me because this is my self-study time and um, I cannot help you. No, so it's about being flexible. She's your own sister. So take a moment and be flexible and just see what is the concern. And maybe, you know, in a one or two lines, I can address her, uh, her, her challenge that she's going through. So flexibility is important. Many times people become rigid and they tend to break the relationships because of being, you know, really rigid and being stubborn about what they think. So life is about being flexible and then a lot of time is wasted to you know, bond that, nurture that relationship back again as it was. Um, um, you know, uh, there's something called as a biological prime time, uh, which means that every individual has this body clock within. And so to know my own body clock uh, in terms of when it functions at its highest potential, is important for me. For example, some people work at the best at early hours in the morning and some people at late night. So they would like to wake up and they would like to do their work and they would like to sleep during the early hours of the day and that's completely okay. So it varies from person to person and so it is important to study my own biological time that when is it that I am at my best. Doing the right thing right is also so important. I may do things, but I, make, I might make some silly mistakes or some errors. And so what happens when one does that? They again spend time in going through the whole thing, you know, and that, that actually wastes time. Rather, if I use that time, I do things slow and steady and I do it accurately. I do it just the way it is to be done. Don't you think that would help me to progress? And so it is important, whether it is students or it is professionals, whether it is their, you know, their work life or it is their own personal life, whatever I do. If I make it, an, uh, make it a, you know, a principle of my life that whatever I do, I do it right. I would experience progress. I would experience inner fulfillment and success in my own life. Eliminating the urgent is also very important. Eliminating the urgent means uh, which is of the highest priority in my present. Mm. Eliminating the urgent examples are like uh, your, your deadlines. So you have been given a project which is to be finished after a week. And so that is very urgent. And so when I calculate the amount of hours I would have to put in to complete that project, you know, I would be able to do a fair assessment of my own self and I'll be able to then uh, work towards that goal. Uh, eliminating the urgent could also be in terms of, um, you know, um, you know, so at home we see that, you know, people have to cook food and they also have to, uh, you know, do their evening work and for the family members they need to cook food which is which is urgent i mean it is important because it is a part of the daily life the, the daily routine that we go through but if somebody says okay i will not cook food today for the whole family but rather i would you know do this work do you think that's right no so uh, finishing your urgent work is is really important and when i finished my urgent work i can do the other activities that i wanted to so that is uh, important. Another point that I want to mention in terms of plugging in time wasters is practicing the art of intelligent neglect. When I say intelligent neglect, it means that I maintain my relationships, I don't break them, I don't harm them, but I very tactfully, I carve my own way out. You know, it's just about saying, uh, saying I, I'll do it, but I won't do it. 
Hmm? It's about being smart. It's about being wise when I'm talking to people. So, for example, I, uh, you know, there are people who want me to come with them right away. They say, come with me right away. I have, you know, I, we, we, we want you to, you know, be a part of this team and leave everything. Come, come, come. And so if I'm in, a, in the middle of something that's really, really urgent and important to me, I can really politely, you know, say, you know, I would just love to come, but, you know, I have this urgent work. So maybe I just, I, you, you just hold on, you know, I'll just, I'll just figure this out and come back, you know, just give me two minutes. Huh? And so there are just ways of, you know, having, you know, practicing the art of intelligent neglect, not even hurting someone, at the same time getting my own, own, you know, my own thing that I want to do, you know, done. Um, being a perfectionist is also not good. So I should not, I should avoid being a perfectionist all the time. It means uh, I do things, um, uh, you know, when things are to be portrayed on a global level or a national level or something that has, that has this public display, maybe I can use my perfectionism in it. But when I don't really need it, you know, I do it things just for my own self, I do it for my family on, on a daily basis. Um, so I don't really need to set the dining table perfectly, you know. My wife doesn't need to set the dining table just like, you know, she would do it when we have some guests coming in on a daily basis. But she could do it neat and tidy and she could just do it in a, in a, in a manner that is acceptable and which is more cordial and nice. So being a perfectionist uh, is actually a wastage of time if you say. Because within that time I can do many other things. Um, next is uh, that I just mentioned in my earlier point and uh, it's about conquering procrastination that I've spoken of. Another is my, I need to learn to say no, which I discussed earlier in terms of, you know, the inabil inability of people to say no to things. So I need to learn to practice that. And lastly, and most importantly, I need to reward myself in time management. As the saying goes, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So I need to also reward myself with a holiday, with an outing, with you know, and with, with a vacation and do, do anything that I would love to do and then get back again into that routine.